microphone. Oh, for crying out loud. Let's try that again, shall we? Hey, everybody, it's Brad. And I'm Krista. With the Big Family Homestead. And I think it would be a good idea to start again with the microphone on. Yeah. Hope you're having a blessed day. <laughs> it's soup weather. Yes, up here in the Northwoods, it hit, I think, 40-something. But the sun came out, and it's actually quite pleasant. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. It's nice that the sun came out. <laughs> so for those of you who decided to stick around because you're like, what? There's no audio. Right, right. Thank you for sticking around. Yeah. There, And you're going to hear it here in a minute. Yeah. Well, I can now. Okay, see, good. Yeah, All right, we, good. We figured it out. Good. It's that crazy on Red button. button. It's the red button you're yeah. not supposed to push. Don't push to push the don't red push button. The red button. Yeah. So, well, actually, you're going to be making a delicious fall I, soup. Delicious, yes. And quick and easy. I wouldn't now, actually, not really quick. Well, the preparation the is preparation quick. The preparation is quick. It's easy to put together. Um, it does require a bit of simmering. Um, but other than that, it's delightful. And that is? A creamy chicken and wild rice soup. Okay, so what do you got for ingredients, Mama? We have, well, wild rice is one, uh, celery, onion, a pound of chicken, some chicken broth, some carrots, garlic, uh, Italian, Italian seasoning. Uh, and if you like bay leaf, you can throw a couple of bay leaves in there. I'm going to leave these out today. Some salt and some milk and a little bit of flour. Oh, and half a stick of butter. Are you going with milk or cream? Uh, milk, actually. Because I know the, the recipe originally called for cream. Right, but our milk is actually quite thick. We talked about this, this though, because no, they can't get our milk. No, we were talking about the hot chocolate mix we you were going to make. can't whisper now, you got to tell them. We were talking about the hot chocolate mix that we were going to make. Remember, honey? Yes, it was. Let's go with milk. Should I show you the chocolate mix? We weren't talking about the wild rice soup. Anyway, I'm going to cut some chicken. Sounds like a good idea. While I stop steaming. Yeah. So, uh, we just have some chicken thighs here. You can use whatever kind of chicken you would like. Um, I just have some chicken thighs here. I'm going to go ahead and take the skin off. Um, you can probably, you could leave the skin on. Um, and then pull it out later, but I'm just going to go ahead and take this off. Yeah, well, if you if you if you left the skin on, mm -hmm. aren't you going to put it into pieces now? Yes, but I have to take the bone off. Right, that's my point. It's like you would have a big floppy skin floating around in the right. That's soup. why you would take it out later. Okay. And you say I don't listen. Sheesh. <laughs> I did say that. Anyway. Okay. So I'm just going to work around this bone and get the meat off of here because I don't want any of that bone in there. Okay. So by the way, as you guys are, are popping on here, if, um, if you have any questions, part of my job is to try to make sure the computer is doing its thing, but also to uh, field any questions if I can catch them. Mm -hmm. If you can remember, please put them in all caps. That helps me grab them, uh, and that way I can ask the question or answer it if it's something that is bred or something that we both know. Right. So there we go. Okay. Scrap and Palette Man says the audio sounds so perfect. Oh, good. I'm so glad that sounds good. Is it, isn't he the fellow that looks like you? You know, I okay, I don't know. What the, is there a gag about this? I don't know. I saw that comment. I've seen it more than once, but I promise you, dude, I have gone and looked at your videos, and all I see is point-of-view videos. <laughs> I actually have seen uh, his face. How about you send me a link? Okay, well, I'll show you later. <laughs> Does he not look like me? He, he is an older version of you. Okay. Because every video I've seen, I'm like, okay, he's doing something, you know, recycling or, or yeah, some kind of... Yeah, he does a lot of scrapping. It's and I keep great. going, what? are you guys just pulling a prank on me? Is this a joke? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't get it. No. No. So, no, it's truly, it's truly, truly. So there right. we go. 
I guess I should have started doing this earlier and then just save one. Didn't think about that. That's funny. Scrub and Palette Man says, that's how I found your channel. One of my viewers funny. says, I look like you. That's funny. Well, you know, there are burdens to bear, my friend. And <laughs> right here, this is one of them, right? We share, we must share something. Your hands, according to my vid videos, must look just like my hands, because that's all I've ever seen of you. <laughs> I'll go back and look. That's so funny. <laughs> all right. So, Arrow Ridge. Just got here. Love your videos. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Tyler Woods is here. Cool. Marge Perez, hi from NPR Ranch. Cool. In Oregon. That would be the Northern Pacific Rim? No, I don't know. Or <laughs> NPR News. Oh, I, I mean. It is Oregon. It is. I don't know. Hello from Chile, South America. Hello, Chile awesome. expat family. I hope you're having an awesome evening. I'm finding lots of little pieces of bone on here. Yeah, they're like toothpicks. Oh, yeah, toothpicks as they get stuck. Yeah, exactly. You no. just got to pop them out, no problem. No way. Tennessee also says Ernie Hatmaker. It's definitely soup weather. Yeah. Steve Gadink says everyone has a doppelganger, I guess. Yeah. Michelle well, is here from Arkansas. Awesome. I think you have probably two or three. You know... Well, there was that one time we were at Disney a few years back. Oh, ten years back, actually. More than that. More than that. Um, where somebody thought you were the guy from Rascal Flats. Rascal Flats, I got that. Yeah. And when I was a little bit thinner and I had spiky blonde hair, before the guy from Food Network did, mm -hmm. Guy Fieri, uh, people would come up and say, oh my gosh, are you him? Are you him? I'm like, uh, yeah, no. no. I cook better than him. But... Yeah. <laughs> wow. And he does. Brad, is, you know, I do a lot of the, you know, a lot of the cooking videos, but Brad does cook probably half the time and he's really good at it. So. Well, I appreciate that. Honey. So yeah, thinking of others says, hey, Mike DeFuzzy, oh, he's here. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Squirrel, he's here. Um, do you remember Julia Childs? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. And if any of you guys remember the Saturday Night Live Julia Childs, no. oh my gosh, where she's prepared, it's a he, you know, kind of dressed up like a girl. And, it? Oops, I've cut the dickens out of myself, and there's Blood's blood everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, I'm not planning on doing that anytime soon. Actually, I just poked myself with the tip of the knife. Did you really? Yeah. Okay, Not so hard, NPR Ranch is Nelson Perez Ranch. There you go. Get that correct. All right, that works. All right, so I've got the bones out of the, chick, uh, the bones. chicken, the thighs. I prefer thighs. If you want this a little bit leaner, you can use chicken breasts. I just, I love the, the flavor that the, the thighs give you. Well, and you, you, but you did just take the skins off. Yes, but there's still lots of fat and stuff inside this thigh. But the flavors in the fat. Like I said, there's still lots of fat inside this thigh. <laughs> um, okay, Larry Parrish, you skipped over my prayer request. Larry, uh, I didn't see one. Was it? Sorry, my friend. And uh, let's see. Uh, Scrap and Pallet Man, I'm playing in a worship band this weekend. I need to leave to go to practice songs rehearsal tonight. Talk to you later. You have a great night. Uh, Tyler Woods. Let's see. Terry is a great cook. Terry is his lovely bride. Mm -hmm. Terry's a great cook, but I am a chef trained by my dad. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Just threw the gauntlet there. Deborah T is. That a is double dog dare? Sorry, go ahead. Is that a double dog dare? Uh, Deborah T is asking, uh, where did you get the flower canister? Walmart. They still have them there. They have them in different sizes too. They have a big, like two gallon size. I think that's the gallon size. That's funny. Marge is asking, do you have to take the bones out? Um, no. I think you can go ahead and and start with that. But you're going to want to take them out for the soup. Yeah, sooner or later, they need to come out. Did you leave the oven on for real? Yeah, no, I... Okay. I just was... It just hit me, and I was like, I feel like heat on the back of my face. Well, and that's why I turned the, uh, the opened up the door. 
Because it was warm in here. <laughs> see, what you guys don't see, well, maybe you can see it, but if we scooch a little bit, Mama made bread bowls for the soup. Yep. Hey, Tanya. Hi, Carla. She loves chicken and rice. Who loves chicken and rice? Everybody loves chicken and rice. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Hello from Louisiana, Sharon Mayan, Mayan, uh, I can never do good with these French names, Mayo, I'm going to go with Mayo. Where? Uh, M the, you don't do good with the, the, the folks Mayu. from Canada. Mayu. Mayu. Mm -hmm. I'm, we're not, we don't French very well. <laughs> no. It's nothing against them, I just, it's the, uh, the way the, <laughs> you, have to per, you have to form your mouth, right. it doesn't work right. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't do French. Arlene is asking, how's the weather there? It's gorgeous right now. It was kind of yucky this morning, overcast. and um, But it's the sun is shining. It's absolutely gorgeous today. Yeah. Tomorrow should be great. We're going to open up some pasture, move some wood. Go to a festival. If you can find one. We talked about this. I know we did. Okay. See, the problem here, guys, in, in Wisconsin is our days are numbered. And I mean that literally and figuratively in that there the sun is shining right now. And it's been gray for five days yeah. already. Yeah. And once once the weather hits where it's like, hey, it's wintertime, you might get one out of ten days that's nice. Yeah. And so... Okay, I have some butter rapidly melting in my hand because it's warm in here. I'm going to go ahead and I did put a little bit of oil in the pot, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little butter in there just so that the butter doesn't um, burn. It kind of, that um, oil and butter kind of mixed together work really well. There we go. Everybody loves chicken and rice. Okay. Shout out from North Carolina says, Midnight Train Bullies. Kennels Homestead. Okay. Oh, funny. That's quite a mouthful that there. That is a mouthful. All right. So, let's get that butter melting. Yeah. I'll go back to the wide cam till yeah. that heats up a little watching, bit. Watching butter melt is, you know. That's very exciting. So exciting. There's some help if I turn the heat up just a touch, which I did. All right. Hey, Premium Mom to Twins is on. Hello. you live. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and throw this chicken in here. Let's see if we can cut to that. Della Peachy is asking. Yes. Uh, if you are going to do a live stream on Thursdays again at what time? Here's the thing, Della. Um, around here. Winter looms heavy. Mm -hmm. There are so many things that I can't begin to tell you that have to get done that some days we get a lot done and some days we don't get enough done. Yeah. Uh, and so when we plan to do something on Thursdays, it it very well me, may mean we mean to. But then the guy dropping off blah, blah, blah for the animals will show up. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't go on a schedule. Or then it'll be snowing outside, which it was last night. Yeah. And so that means that we got to switch gears and get wood that's been cut into the garage so it can stay dry or else we won't be able to burn it. Yep. And there's a million things like that that happen. So even though we may want to do that. We might not be able to. At least not until the real snow sets in. Yeah. Because then life will kind of get back to normal a little bit. Ooh, that's that's a that's a pungent one. That's harsh. Let me see. Oh, that's a pungent one. Yeah. Christy Dennis is asking if this recipe is in your cookbook. It is not. Yet. Yet. Um, this one is a new one that I've kind of been working with and tweaking, tweaking. a little bit, and uh, so I'm hoping that maybe in a, another edition, it might go in there. Probably something in maybe the spring. Right. So I'm just going to dice up this onion quickly because holy smokes is it harsh. That's a hot one. Yeah, it is. That's a hot one. And it's not anything particular. I'm just doing a rough chop. It's kind of hard when it's 
open like that. Okay. Philip Vastopoulos is asking, have you ever tried chicken with sauerkraut? Um, no. No. I that like sauerkraut. Interesting. Uh, one of our staple meals around here is sausage and sauerkraut, like Polish or beef kielbasa or sausage mm -hmm. with um, sauerkraut, and then we'll have it with mashed potatoes. It's like pretty German. My ears, my eyes are tearing up pretty bad, actually. Yeah. Primitive boiler. That's the only one you get, primitive. What? Somebody. We'll see. That's the only one you get. I don't do. Uh... Just take it off. Yeah. I just had onion juice squirt on my face. All right. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and put this onion in here because it's burning my eyes like crazy. Larry, you said to make any questions in all caps. I've done it now twice. Well, Larry, you may not understand that what I'm reading off of is this big. And right now, there are 20 comments on there. So if I didn't catch it, it does not mean that it was malicious. No, not at all. And besides, if this is like a, a prayer request kind of thing, um, it's an email then basically this is not, I mean, this is not our normal devotional kind of thing. No. <laughs> so let's see. We're just going to go ahead and uh, yeah, bang. Go on. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay. So um, if, if it's something that is, is pertinent to what we're doing, I'd love to see it again, and I did not see it, and it was not intentional. I'm going to try and scroll back and see what we got. Looking for all common, all caps. Let's see. All right, now all I'm doing is just kind of giving these carrots a rough chop so they're smaller. And then I'm gonna put these into these, the chicken and onions as well. Uh, yes. well I'll give that one to Nana later. Man, Nana scrolling. loves carrots. I'm scrolling back this whole way and I promise you, I do not see a single thing. Now, okay, Larry, here's here's something that you got to know about YouTube, too. That um, there are buzzwords that YouTube will automatically flag yeah. during live streams. The very first comment I see of yours, friend, and the only reason why I'm even doing this is because you're a friend of the channel. Yeah. Normally, I just blow past it. But just so you know, that's why I'm taking this extra time because I don't want you thinking we're being jerks to you because no. we're not. The very first comment I'm seeing is you actually skipped over my prayer request. So just so you know, YouTube actually blocks certain names and phrases in different ways of doing things. And so, yeah, and Tanya's saying I don't see Larry's question either. Well, I appreciate that because I don't, I don't, we don't try to be nasty to anybody. No. If somebody's being nice, we're, we're happy to be nice. Yeah. Okay, so I put the carrots in there, and it's about a cup of carrots. I'm going to add some garlic. Yeah. It's so you're liking. If you don't like garlic, don't put it in. Um, and then I'm going to throw in, a. I cut, chopped up two stalks of celery. Okay. And, you know, so we've got our our trifecta here, the onions, the carrots, and the celery. They call it a mirepoix. Mirepoix. But I'm, we're not, we don't do the, we don't do French. <laughs> But I just like those three flavors together. Creamy mom to twins, can you substitute Thrive Life stuff? Yes. You can. You can. Absolutely. And we, and we actually thought about that. Um, and we decided to go with uh, store-bought stuff today. Um, we actually used a bunch of Thrive Life stuff earlier today. Yeah, I made chicken salad for lunch. Look at that mirepoix up close. Okay. Now we're gonna just let this go until those um, those uh, veggies, the onions and the celery, are translucent. Um, okay, here's a question yeah. from Midnight 
train kennel homestead. Mm -hmm. uh, what breed of cow do you think is best for meat? Now, we, okay, we had always been brought up to think Angus cows are the best. Angus cows are the best. And then you move here and then people go, well, Holsteins are really good for this. Or then, you know, you move a little bit for more towards the eastern side of the country and they're like, have you had Jersey beef? And what we're finding out is that each cow breed really excels in certain areas, areas of the actual meat. Like, for example, our, we've had Jersey steers. One. One. We've actually had a Holstein and a Jersey. And two different the, types. the Jersey ground beef was ridiculously amazing. Mm -hmm. The best ground beef I've ever had in my life. Yeah. And it was very little fat, but it still had a lot of flavor. Yeah. Now, we like, okay, since we're raising it ourselves, we can have like the, the meat of kings the once in a while. The best cut of meat. Because it doesn't cost us any more than ground beef. Right. Which is prime, prime rib. rib. So we have had probably the best prime rib off of our Jersey steer ever. See, I disagree with her. Oh, I, I don't. I, I, well, of course I don't disagree with me. I no. never disagree with me. No. I I am leaning towards for that kind of a thing for steak, and this is a preference. This is a personal preference. Yeah. For steaks, I really do like the Angus flavor better. Okay. But that's just me. And also, you're gonna on a bigger cow, you're gonna get a bigger prime, bigger steaks, bigger that. Yeah, you'll have more from a beef cow than you would a Jersey. Um, we raised our Jersey, um, and we put him in the freezer. At, at about 18 months old and we got about 350 pounds of meat. Now I know that may not seem a lot because if you've had Angus before you're gonna have more. Yeah. But for our family that's plenty for a year. It is, it is and uh, I will I will add to the conversation. Mm -hmm. It depends like if you're considering like what kind of cow should I get for a family cow or a beef cow. We have learned a lot about that oh in the last three years. Yeah. And you got to understand too, different cows have basically different temperaments. Mm -hmm. Certain ones are driven more by food than they are by managing them and moving mm -hmm. them. Uh, certain ones, the, the, the bulls, you don't want to have a bull. No. Uh, certain ones, you can. Yeah. You can get away with it. Well, and up here in the Northwoods, you can find Jersey cows and, or Jersey, I'm sorry, Jersey bulls, calves, and Holstein bull calves. For very, 20 bucks. 20 to $75. $20. Okay. You can raise this animal from a bottle calf. If you have a milk cow, you can raise it pretty much for free. If you have a, if you, yeah. If you have true, a little cow. But then you've got to keep in mind, like, Jersey bulls are notoriously mean. Yes, they are. Like, very notoriously mean. mean. Right. And then they've also got them horns. Right. So, so, that's not a winning combo. No, but what you do, if you do buy a Jersey bull or a Holstein bull, castrate it and dehorn it right away. Don't let those horns come up. It, to dehorn up here is really inexpensive. Um, the vet came out and dehorned Dottie and um, our um, Buttercup, and it was what sixty-five dollars for both. Yeah, it was really inexpensive. If you know how to do it yourself, that's even better. But um, um, anyway, I I found another um, uh, our heifer calf or heifer cow heifer heifer Dottie. She is a mix of Jersey and Limousine, which Jersey is a dairy cow. Limousine is a meat cow. I have read many different places where that is what um, some of these beef growers are going to because they grow quick. They, yeah. they marble. But the temperament's different. The temperament is, not, is much nicer. And they, they, they hit, the, hit their market weight at 15 months. Right. So it's a fantastic return on investment right and and you also have to keep in mind too guys that 
you may have uh, restrictions in terms of how much property you have access mm -hmm. to. Are you going to be raising your own hay? Mm -hmm. How are you going to deal with things like poop? Yep. You know, you've got to take into consideration all of those things. And all of the different breeds have different pluses and minuses. And they might not be the same for us as they would be for you. Right. Right. So a um, couple things. Let me, let me jump into a couple things. Larry Parrish, if you're saying that you're in the hospital, we will absolutely be praying yes, for you. Definitely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, would this make a great meal in a jar? And the answer is yes, yes, it would. Yes, it would. If you're using Thrive Life ingredients, this is an, a fantastic meal in a jar. Um, so the next things with that, and the next thing I'm going to be adding is the Thrive Life Italian seasoning. I actually just love it. emptied this container. I love this. I add it to spaghetti sauce. Um, I had it to pretty much everything, but I've got about a tablespoon in, in this um, yep. measuring cup here. Equips this. Um, Brad, take off that hat in your house. <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing. We've been talking about that. Pond 55, we've actually had that conversation. Yeah. We've, we have had that conversation, and we've had it multiple times throughout the last week. Yep. Because I was in the Marine Corps for a short amount of time. My sons are in the military. Mm -hmm. However, um, I'm also a believer, and then I look at you know, Judaism, they wear their kippahs all the time. Then there are other denominations that don't wear it at all. You know, unless you're just outside and you want to keep your, you know, the, the sun out of your face or if you're in the military, you take your cover off when you're inside. I get that. I understand that. Uh, and I kind of, I kind of had this conversation with mama. Yeah. And we thought, you know what, you know, I'm not in the military. And that's not why I wear it or don't wear it. I just wear it because I like it. Yeah. And and it doesn't bother me if he's wearing his hat in the house. The only time that he you do take off your hat is when we're praying and sitting at the dinner table. And so I if if it's some if it's a matter of disrespect, I don't want to disrespect anybody. Yeah. So I would if I saw that there was a lot of people around me that were taking their hat off, I would do that. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand that your rules are not my rules. No. You know, and and it's she's okay with it, and yeah. it's not. It's, tr trust me, it's nothing to disrespect. No, not at all. It's one of those things where we actually really thought it out. It was like, do I am I offending people? Right. And then if if I'm offending them because they were in the military, well, then I guess that's a choice you're making. Mm -hmm. You're making that decision whether or not you should be offended, or is it just a rule that you were brought up with? It's not a rule I was brought up with. Right. So after I added the Thrive seasoning, um, I added the wild rice in. And now um, and I mix that around just to kind of meld with the flavors. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle in a half a cup of flour to absorb all of the uh, juices and the butters and the fats um, that are in here. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the broth. Well, now. I'm going to cook this for just a minute or two. Get that flour taste off. Now, Equip Sis says, I just think you look much better without it. Oh. Well, that said, you get the close cam, Equip Sis. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. For me, it's honestly something that we, we've really thought about because I don't want to tick anybody off. Right. You know, it's, but you still got to live your life. Right. All right. I know this is heresy in the homesteading world. I'm using purchased broth. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, Haunted. They're saying that they just think, oh, I'm blushing now. I swear I am. Am I not? Yeah. Yeah. 47 years old and still blushing. Whatever. I'm going back to the food cam. <laughs> yeah. So we need six cups of chicken broth. Tina Weber says, we have no hats at the dinner table. And you know what? I respect that. Absolutely. If we were at your house, I would 100% have my hat removed. Right. Oh, Steve. Now Steve's shaming me. I'm getting a Steve shaming. So wow. Brad, show off that fancy haircut from your kids. <laughs> you know, part of it is honestly that. 
It's, it's really short. short. It's short. <laughs> you know, and I, okay, let's, let's look at the soup while we talk. I have never been one to care about somebody's hair. Yeah. Because we've had crazy hairstyles. Uh, you know, that, that yeah, we're, we're, it's I don't just care, hair. I don't care if you have tattoos, if you have earrings, I don't care the hairstyle you I mean, have. It's not for us. No, I, it's not for me. You know, and if you want to do it that way, fine. It's, we look at the character. You look at the content the of content the character. The content of your character. And if you're... Trust Excuse me, Excuse me, if you're not a nice person, then I will deal with you accordingly. All you got to do <laughs> is look at the evening news, and there are plenty of people with the bows and ties and the perfect haircuts oh, that no. I don't want to have anything Ew. to do with. Run away. away. And you know what? There's not a tattoo among them. No, that they show anyway. And I know lots and lots of people who you would think, oh my gosh, this guy looks frightening or scary. That are the nicest people you'll ever meet, but I've seen and been around with some of the most people that look the most prim and proper that are the... Big old teddy bears. Well, but no, also the ones that are the thieves and crooks that look like... True. They're right off the evening news. True. All right, I'm going to add some salt and pepper to this. How much rice did you use, as I used Rita? a cup. One cup. Okay. And besides, if I take the hat off... I'm going to give somebody a glare here. It's like, there's going to be a lens flare across your screen. That's funny. I'm going to move this over to the other stove. Is the Don back? No, that's Kent. He's, okay. He's, um, well, that's enough. We don't take, know how much we're allowed to talk about. Take care of I know, but... Okay. Nope, that's the Don. Oh, he is back. Oh, okay, well, now we'll, then we can talk about it. Because he, he was... Went he to went to Cincinnati. No, to, well, Northern Kentucky. Yeah, he went to the um, the uh, the Noah's Ark. Yeah. What do they call it? The Noah uh, Ark Encounter. The Ark Encounter. Yeah. yeah, where they built that life-size recreation of the Ark mm -hmm. there, and they filled it up, and it's a giant museum. Mm -hmm. I just want to know how they got the uh, the uh, blue whale in there. That's that's got to be pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm sure. Eyes to see, says Krista. Can you please pay, please make a video on using your spice? Oh, the, the the sassanita. Oh, yeah. We have several. We have we do have several. Um, you know, honestly, you can do whatever you want with it. You can season chicken with it. Um, you can season burritos with it. Um, steak, pork, popcorn. Popcorn. We use it on our Mexi corn. So Mexican corn is it's street corn. Street corn, Mexican street corn. What yep. did I call it the first time? You call it Mexican corn. Okay. Well, that's okay. okay. Some people might call it that. Me Mexican street corn, right? So I know it sounds kind of sounds weird, but you've got your roasted corn, mayonnaise on top of that. Then you put the the sassanita on top, and then a little bit of lime, and it is delightful. That's the only way I'll eat corn on the cob now. Yeah, I I still have to go between butter and salt, and then. <laughs> Not me. Mexican brother. street no coin. Hey, there's so many bike riders from Slovenia. Hello, Slovenia. How are you? Ugh. Let's see. Okay. You Every... know, somebody asked, I can't remember who it was. They asked about the the jars for the flour. And I have a few down here on the bottom. The only thing I don't like about them is they can chip. So, I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the arc is awesome. No whale on either arc. That was that was pretty much uh, just a little bit of a fun thing. Oh, that's. I wouldn't. That's think it was funny. a floating aquarium. I, I didn't even catch that. That's really sad. Yeah. Darlene right. says best place to go is the arc encounter. Funny. So now we've been chatting it up, and, and you've been cooking as you go. Yeah. But um, how long is that going to need to to simmer now? It's going to need to simmer at least twenty minutes till that rice cooks. Okay, now let's get a close-up of these, your, the uh, bread bowls you made, Mama. Let's see. There we go. Now, what bread recipe is this? This is the French bread recipe, and it is in the first cookbook. And all I did with it, um, and you can see they're different sizes. We have different sized people in the house. Um, so this one is actually Brad's. 
<laughs> I like the small he one. He likes the small one because he doesn't want, he wants to fill up on the soup, not the bread. Well, and I don't eat as much as I used to. And this is a Ruth size one. No. Just she kidding. eats the bills. She <laughs> really does. Kidding. So, actually, I think Caleb probably will take that big one. He loves bread. Yeah. Um, but I just divided it into six pieces. You can do them equal sizes. It's really entirely up to you. But this was a single recipe. And this would make one loaf of French bread if you decided to do that. No, I'm sorry. Two loaves of French bread. I guess who's here? From the Netherlands. <gasps> Anchor! You've been gone for so long. I hope all is well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very cool. She changed her name to yeah. straight up Inger. Yeah. Okay. That's very cool. Okay. So, to make a bread bowl, you kind of have to bore out the middle, the center of it. Um, Go ahead and do it. So, what I, I, I always, by the time I get to the last one, then I have it perfect. But, um. We'll start on mine then, because it doesn't really matter. No, 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 it's fine. I'll start on this one. We're so you just kind of make, you know, you want a, a nice um, edge so that it holds your soup in. And you get enough soup. Yeah. You could use this for um, like a, a spinach dip or an artichoke spinach dip or, you know, whatever. I don't think you could do this with French onion soup. That might make a mess. Uh, Bike Riders from Slovenia says we eat corn with garlic and salt. Ooh, that sounds good. And then we bake it over the fire. That sounds really good. Hey, you know what? We will do our best interpreting each other. That's awesome. Don't worry about the English. Yeah. That's awesome. Glad you're here. Okay. Let's see who's okay. here. Where's Char? Hello, big family. Just now joining this awesome channel. All right. So I'm just going to kind of pull out the sides here. And we generally let the kids do this part. Yeah. Because oh. they love it. Yeah, well, and what ends up usually happening is I always cut the bowls. I'll cut a few bowls, but then we put the soup in regular bowls anyway. No. Yeah, and then we just dip it in here, dip it in. Well, they like to put the soup in there, and then they use the bread, like, to, to put yeah. on their spoon. Yeah. Yeah. There. Let's Not see. too close to the bottom of the thing, because otherwise you leak through, but... Oh, gotta go to the close cam, maybe. Uh, hold on here. All right, you mark it set. Closer. There we go. Closer to the heart or the bun. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And you know what? That's not the. It's not the kind of recipe for every day. But I gotta tell you what. It really adds something. And mm -hmm. in terms of money, it doesn't take Anyways. that much more to make the bread bowl. It does take more time. It does take. Well, this particular bread recipe takes an hour and a half start to finish because you well okay maybe an hour and 40 minutes 45 minutes because you gotta count mixing time um let me turn that down i wanted to get to a boil um so you mix up the dough you let it rise for 30 minutes you divide it into your pieces or your loaves or whatever you want to do and you let it rise for 30 minutes and then you bake it for 30 minutes. It's bam, 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 done. So when you're in a hurry to make a loaf of bread, this is a really good one. And we have not experimented with this, but I have seen other people comment thinking that what we should do is half bake the bread. And then freeze it? Yep. We could. And then freeze it. That way you pop it out and then from 30 minutes to done. Right. You could do that. You totally Never do tried that. it, but you know. Well, yeah, you could do that. You're a bread snob, so. I am a bread snob, and you've made me that way. I know. I actually, I've been really stubborn lately. I haven't made any loaf bread in a That's long time. That's not why. No, that is why. Uh -uh. Because the Brad and the kids oh. will only eat it on day one, and then That's it goes back. That's just me. That's not the kids. No, that's the kids too. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. They may eat it the next day, but then it just goes to waste. So I'm, yeah. like, I'm not going to do this. This is crazy. Well, but that's the recipe. Why don't you why don't you pour some out here, Mama? You want to fill it up? Well, it's not done yet. I have to add the milk. We'll give that one to uh, Ruth. She won't even know. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> You're such a good Are you going to add the milk? Yes. I'm gonna do add it. The milk. And the, yeah, you gotta show the presentation. All right. Gee whiz. 
ounces. So in goes the milk. How much in milk? Goes the milk, a cup and a half. Okay. And that just makes it creamy. Okay. You know, and you could instead of using rice, you could use noodles if you wanted. But you'd have to put them in later. Yeah. Or else they would just be mush. Yeah, you would have to put them right, or cook the pre cook them pre cook them. You don't think they would dis disintegrate? I think they would. Well, it depends on how long you cook it. I guess. Because well, yeah, it depends. Yeah, it really does depend on how yeah. long you go with everything. Yeah. Okay, um, this is Midnight Train Bullies Kennel. Uh, can you do a live stream or video with how to do canning? We've actually done several canning videos. You just mm -hmm. got to do Big Family Homestead canning yeah. in the search. We've got several of those. Um, but that's not a bad idea to try to do live, except that it takes a long time. It depends on what you're canning. Yeah, if we're pressure you know, canning. If you're pressure canning... Um, meat takes 90 minutes and that's just one from the time it gets to, to pressure. So it's really kind of, um, it's, challenging. Yeah. So I got a bar, larger bowl here so that in case it leaks, we catch it. There we go. That's wise. Eat this. Okay. I think we're almost there kids. And I'm excited because I got all my barn stuff done today early, and I've even got my video edited today. What? So I don't, I, I'm going to, oh, close cam. Close cam on your market set. You're almost there. Get in there closer. Woo! Can you see the steam, people? Look at that. Chicken and creamy wild rice, or creamy chicken creamy and chicken wild, and wild rice. rice. Yeah. Nice. So, there you go, honey. The bowl is absorbing your soup. That's my. That's the wrong bowl. I, yeah, well. Well, then we gotta we gotta say goodbye. We gotta say goodbye and eat dinner quick. <laughs> no. I'll eat that one because I, right. like, I like. I uh, like. Where's Shar? Yes, I have canned bubble gum. She knows that. She does. Yes. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we really do, really do appreciate you guys reaching out and being uh, supportive mm -hmm. of the channel and. Definitely. Um, so hang in there with us because winter's coming and when winter's here, things are going to go wonky and know they're going to finally. Yeah, we'll show you all of the fun stuff. I'll drag her around white, on a tube in the snow. The white death and stuff. <laughs> all right. Oh so you guys my. have an amazing night. Yep. Good night. Bye bye.